There's no question about it. This tier list right here is going to be my absolute favorite that I have ever made. On the flip side of that coin, it will inevitably be the most disagreed with tier list that I've ever made. This patch created a character dichotomy that I was waiting for in Mortal Kombat 1. Even if you hate Pharah and you hate a lot of the other things that are going on right now, there is something specific that hasn't happened so far. And that's when you look at characters matchup charts. It was like the top tier characters only had winning matchups and the bottom tier characters only had losing matchups. With this patch, there are a lot more characters that have both 6-4 winning matchups and 4-6 losing matchups, which inevitably leads to more disagreement. It's why if you've been on Twitter at all recently, almost every single tier list from any pro player looks different, which is really weird. And so as always, just let me know in the comments what you guys think about your main character and try and provide what you think is the worst matchup or the best matchup in whatever you have to say about it because I think that's really important right now. Oh, also, Road to Rank 1, I know everybody's going to leave a comment. My final training session with a pro player is tonight, so that's coming, but I definitely had things I needed to work on. I mean, I was just outside of the top 100 ranks, which is mostly just pro players or amateur pro players. So I had a pro look at my gameplay and it turns out, yeah, I mean, I I'm... So for the start of top 10, there are two characters specifically that people are between, and that is Johnny Cage and Tanya. So I think Tanya goes above Johnny if we're talking about combat league and online play for sure. But with Johnny, it's like he hasn't gotten a lot of substantial changes since not only was he mirror matched in grand finals of EVO, Sonic Fox also won with Johnny Cage in final combat. So no matter what, he would be top two, but let's talk about Tanya here because she's the newcomer. She was always good, but oh my. Maybe I have rose-tinted glasses, but Tanya Farah might be the most annoying team I've ever gone against in the entirety of MK1. So her strengths were always that she could backdash everything, she could punish everything, she kept everything safe with Goro, lots of plus frames, she was really annoying to deal with. Well now, take that build and put 50-50 launches on top of everything. Let's just start with her armor. When she armor attacks, if it hits, she can confirm with up Farah and continue the combo. If it's blocked, she can still confirm into up Farah, and then it's a 50-50 guess. In fact, she almost wants that to happen because she'll get more damage than the armored combo version. And then on top of that, she teleports up into the air all the time. So again, she can use the overhead and low in the air with Farah there as well. I don't know why I'm blanking, but I'm pretty sure she has a good throw combo. I just can't picture it in my head right now. So overall, Tanya builds meter really fast, has the best armored attack in the game, has the best backdash game in the game. She has a projectile so she can zone. She gets a parry. I would say in a way she's more complete than Johnny Cage Chameleon. Just yeah, Tanya's mad annoying. We saw Ninja Killer put Tanya one, but everybody's putting Tanya at one. She's annoying. The third best character, and it's kind of a shame the nerfs didn't do anything to him. It is Homeland. I'm all right with Homelander being strong because he has incredible rushdown. His rushdown is pretty comparable to Johnny Cage's, if not equal or better. I just don't like that one of his advantages is he's the sole character you will have to play differently against with your main to beat. To me, there's not enough hit stun on the air force or just the air kick. Even though you can down one it, you can interrupt it for combos. He just kind of gets free cameo choice because he has a great projectile, even though I think people are still using Chameleon. And I won't say too much because he literally feels like the exact same Homelander just without the bug on he could use his launcher and then do something out of it on block. So he feels the exact same otherwise. So that dropped him from second best to third. You're going to find most people put him in the top five. I think for me, because I play Scorpion, he's third because back three becomes almost unusable. I feel like Sindel and Kenshi have a thing going because they both avoid nerfs like the plague. But weirdly, they also don't match up into each other very well. You would think this would be a 5-5 five, five slugfest, but I think Sindel clearly wins it in the matchup. So Nell's just kind of the same old, same old. If you're at range, she's one of the best zoners in the entire game, and she can really zone you out. If you watch that Sikander beef set that I've been seeing clips of on Twitter, yeah, Sikander did just get zoned out with Sub-Zero, and it's just the way you have to play her. But on the opposite side of that coin, when she gets into your face, now you're getting Vortex 50 50 for 100% health. As we saw, Grand Finals Waz get flawless. Hallelujah, we have a new character that finally is gracing the top 10. This character might drive you up a wall, and the fact that it's two touches and you can't hardly do anything about it is crazy. Natara is in her final form. Now, I don't know what'll happen to Natara if Farah gets gutted. 
I think she would drop down a bit again, but the dive kick changes alone helped her a ton. I mean, she's doing like 50% meterless, so she essentially two touches you, or does it in three touches, but also gets to break at any point. So when you finally land a hit, you don't get to earn any of that damage back on her, because she just saves so much bar. I think the raw dive kick is a little annoying. I know a lot of people are complaining about missing the punish on the raw dive kick, which is supposed to be punishable. It's just the pushback is crazy. And I get why the pushback's there, but for how much damage she can do off just throwing that out in the air and getting a full conversion is kind of nuts. Next up is Reiko. And yes, his game plan is not really boring, I would say. It's just not the most fun to watch, but he's really solid and he plays into the current meta heavily. The current meta, a lot of characters want to be bunny hopping around because again, you can use Farah in the air, so you don't mind flying around. And look at this list, like Natara is good in the air, Homelander's good in the air, and we're going to be talking about some others that are good in the air. So his projectiles can kind of shut that down. Plus, if he needs to close the zoning gap, the slide is pretty good. I mean, having the mid command grab is always going to be nice. I will say though, if that projectile didn't exist or it wasn't as good at stopping people at all points, like he can't jump over it, he wouldn't be this high, but he plays well into the tier list because of that. Scorpion's going next. For real, Scorpion is really, really strong. I'd say your three cameos that really are dominating right now are Farah, of course, especially for the casual player. You're going to want to use Farah. Motaro is second because he kind of just torches some matchups. The opponent literally can't do anything about it. You kind of get free wins with Scorpion Motaro. And lastly, Janet Cage. You're still seeing people like Averk use Janet Cage, and that's a lot for the armored combos. It's nice to always be able to convert off of that. And once you get the opponent cornered, you are Kenshi at that point, essentially. So there's definitely moments that Janet has her place, but I'm going to focus solely on Farah here just to make it simple. Scorpion's meterless teleport being considered airborne just breaks the game. Let me show you this clip right here. This is a common round start with Scorpion and just, yeah, one wrong guess essentially after I get the first hit and the opponent has lost over 80% of their health bar. It's actually insane. And then if you count walk up throw after that or mind game between a mid, it's, it's just like the round ends so quickly. But let's be real. The other things back three into Farah is strong. It is very, very strong. The only thing holding back Scorpion from going any higher is how strong other characters are in the air. So you're kind of throwing if you throw up back three too often, because then all of a sudden Natara dives down because you threw back three and does a 50% combo on you. So that's the only reason he's not top five, in my opinion, is just back three in this meta can't be used as often. You could cheese out opponents with 2-1 Farah stance, hit the back dash Farah stance, and then call either the overhead or low. It works way more often than you think. This is why I wanted the coaching though, because if you just default with this team, you're not going to find max success. Like if you do 2-1 Farah and try and do it right away, you're going to get interrupted every time. 4-3-4, four, four, same thing. You're going to get interrupted every time, and you can't even really back dash on that one. But if you land a down one on hit, a Scorpion Farah, quiz to yourself, what should you do after that? I know it's not road to rank one yet, but you need to be hitting back two, which is his anti-air button. Down one, jails the nine frame back two, and then you can cancel back two into your Farah mix. Stuff like that, that makes Scorpion so good. He lands a poke, goes for back two, and now he gets a 50-50 safe launching mix-up. Back three technically doesn't have a Farah gap either if you're far away, but up close it doesn't start up quick enough, so you can't down one, then back three, and guarantee the mix-up. But just to wrap it up, because I've covered a lot of this in other videos, Scorpion finally plays like Scorpion. You can just be in and out with the teleport cancel. You can really mind game throws or mids. I open people up so often now, just teleport canceling, and it's a guess between mid or throw, and that's tough. Scorpion is finally strong, and I'm really happy with that. Even if Farah gets gutted, right, he probably would drop to the bottom of top 10 in my eyes. I just think the changes completed Scorpion, and I think this is the final version of him that we'll get, unless there's any micro adjustments, because right now, Scorpion turns around the wrong direction all the time. That's like one of the small things holding him back as well. Here, I'm playing clips of it right now. Even when I'm against this Baraka player, right? 
right? I do it, Scorpion turns around the wrong way. So I delay it the next time and it drops. This stuff is, oh, it's infuriating. Scorpion's tracking on the direction is annoying. Next up, I have Ashra. And it's not even that Ashra is worse than some of these characters in my eyes. It's just, she's not getting much play time. And that's solely because you can't really be just jumping around as Ashra. At least that's what it feels like to me. Now that everybody has safe 50-50 mix and stuff like that, like, Ashra's mix isn't that special. Like, yeah, she has good plus frames, and the dark stance cancel is still probably one of the best special moves in the game. And don't get me wrong, she's easily, like, top three in the lower ranks, kind of like Baraka. She's annoying to fight against. I just think Ashra's placement really relies on how good Farah is. If Netherrealm decides to nerf Farah, then Ashra will shoot back up to, like, top five or six, like she's been the entire lifespan of the game. Oh, do I piss the people off already? I have a pick that I want in top... 10. I've been saying this character is good since the beginning, even when everybody else put this guy in the bottom of the list. Nope, I'm doing it now. Xiao is good and top 10. I don't care. I know he might not have been good before, but you guys have seen my tier list. I always put him relatively high, and it's one of the most commented things on any of my tier lists. Who thought Xiao with Pharaoh was an okay idea? I mean... <laughs> He's just like, he's a tank. His mix-ups are finally complete. Like, he can play the game well, and oh my. He can cancel out of, like, when he goes for the knee launcher right, he can catch himself with up Farah and do the overhead and keep himself safe. He just has a lot going for him now. I mean, it's really self-explanatory. Tanky health now has 50-50s for days and can use them on some of his special moves when he has axe or when he doesn't. Really strong character right now. Feels like Xiao is impossible to finish, man. It's crazy sometimes. And to round this out, now in pro play, in pro play, I don't think Kenshi is top 10. I think too many characters counter pick him. And in certain matchups, Kenshi is the best character in the game. I bet you've been on Combat League, you see the opponent's record is like 50 and 5. And you're like, huh, I'm a mid rank player. Am I going against a Smurf, a new account? No, it's almost always a Kenshi player. That's because in Combat League, you can't counter pick him. So if you're just stuck having to deal with Kenshi, he becomes the best in the game. And it's why pro players are going to put him a little bit lower, but for this kind of combat league tier list, he's a hit or a miss. And he's the mid rank destroyer. I love looking at all the Kenshi records on the combat league leaderboards and they go to the profile and I'm like, wow, you're not even top 1000 ranked, but you are destroying everyone. And you'd think the Kenshi player would climb higher. The issue is once you reach the higher ranks and you go against characters or players that can deal with Kenshi, that player immediately falls down, takes their two or three losses and then wins 25 more to get back there. Go says subscribe everybody. Thank you. All right, here's where we hit the trickiest part of the tier list. I do think people are right that Baraka is making a resurgence when you use Kano cameo or Cyrax cameo for that matter. I will say I've run into those good Barakas and the character feels very strong. I just don't feel like he's getting the play time required for a top character, but I guess you could say that about Kenshi as well. I don't and Tanya and Reiko a little bit, but especially Kenshi, people play Tanya and Reiko. I'd say Baraka though is like the second lowest played that I see outside of Kenshi out of these characters right here. It's tough for me. The way you win with Baraka is, we'll leave him there for now, but yes, his armor breaking potential is really, really good. And in this meta, there are so many characters with armor combos with Pharah, Scorpion not being one of them, sadly. And overall, he's a complete character with a projectile, plus frames, good damage, Damage. He does have a strong mid. His stand two is long range like Scorpion's. I, you know, I can really see it. I think my big thing is if you want the mid launch, you have to take the risk. So you need to be good at hit confirming. And maybe in my experience, online Barakas haven't been that good at hit confirming, but I'm cool with him there. Yeah, I mean, he has far reaching armor as well that he could keep safe with Kano. So yeah, he's definitely making resurgence and he's definitely good. Remember those like four or five months where you literally never saw a Baraka because of the Cyrax nerfs? He's finally back. You'll see him in play every so often. Next we have Kung Lao, which it's fairly straightforward as 
as to why, Goro getting a buff helped him a lot, because now he doesn't really have to rush things. Yeah, he gets his plus frames, his armored plus frames, his armored launching plus frames. Dive kick is really strong, but with the Goro buffs, he can kind of just take his time, and when he does land something, convert for really good damage. And I think out of every character on the tier list, Kung Lao is the one that you guys have seen me in the past, I sleep on the hardest. But in the past couple months, maybe I just wasn't getting matched up with the good ones. I have been playing against the good Kung Laos, and I just fully see it. Everyone always said Kung Lao is probably my biggest, like, I'm putting him too low, which is fair if you thought that, because I'm kind of with you now. This character is really strong right now. I'd say the only crime of Kung Lao to me, right, if you're a Kung Lao man, you could think completely differently. I think he's kind of boring to play, but I say that about Reiko as well. I don't know. Maybe it's just not my character. Bet you didn't expect to see Ermac above some of these characters below, but no, in the current meta where being in the air is strong, Ermac is strong. What I think is kind of funny about that is most Ermac players are playing Janet Cage as well, so it's not like he has anything new, in my opinion, of why he's being way more played and you're actually seeing Ermac's in the top 100 on the leaderboard now, is that he plays into the current meta his check in neutral which like a check is just a quick move he can throw out and it's usually safe if it's blocked and if not he converts into Janet Cage, which is really nice for him. But on top of that, yeah, he just doesn't have to use a lot of meter to get damage, which means in a lot of rounds, he's spending the overshield thing, so he doesn't take any damage at all, which gets really confusing for a lot of players. He probably has what I like to call like the cleanest looking pressure or the best pressure, even though it's clearly like Johnny Cage and Tanya and stuff. I don't know how to describe it. Like an Ermac player can make it so you really just have to spend everything to get your turn back. And I think now Ermac is kind of finally fleshed out, whereas before people didn't know all the correct ways to go about things. This kind of happened with Omni-Man, where now that people know the optimal pressure routes into strike throw and stuff like that, he is really, really strong. And I was shocked when I got on this season. I have seen more Ermac than I have like Takeda at this point. Oh, do I put Omni-Man high? I think Omni-Man is for sure A, right? I, he might move down. Omni-Man is same old, same old. Same Omni-Man that was used in top eight of a lot of offline tournaments with Movado. Movado changed the game for him because, yeah, he just used 2-1-2, converts off everything, and converts off of his armor. It slash uses just the projectile push thing and combos and honestly i get mistakenly jailed like i'm making the wrong choice i get jailed all the time against omni-man when it doesn't feel like i should it's definitely a skill issue kind of thing but yeah he just he never really feels like he's losing the matchup no matter who you're playing i think that's like the beauty of omni-man he can play a lot of games for these next four i think they could all be interchanged so when i'm talking about all these four don't really look at the order of these four specifically even though the list is ordered because if you swapped one in front and then the other one in last, that would make sense too. I have Liu Kang, I have Rain, I have Li Mei, and I have Katana. Except, I, you know, Li Mei is good, right? But her buff, it's like she still plays the same way Li Mei always has. Like, the little differences are good, you know, you finally have a string you can confirm into instead, but it's kind of like when Scorpion got the 4-3-4. Like, it's nice to have, but it's not game-changing yet. I bet Lee Mei will get a buff in the future, kind of like Scorpion did, that really just completes what they're going for when they're doing these things. I personally think we have Katana first, Liu Kang second, Rain third, and Lee Mei fourth. You guys will have to let me know your order, but... Katana, still straightforward, but Jax buffs are nice. Like, she takes advantage of the Jax buffs, and she's always been upper A, so having Jax be a little bit better, quite nice for her. And the other beauty of her kit, there's a lot of ways you could play with her. You could play with Pharah really, really well. I mean, most of Katana's strings go airborne, so she all of a sudden cancels into Pharah. But the thing is, as we get to this point in the list, as I've said that a thousand times about all these other characters, it's not really all that special. I still think she's strong, right? I'll put it this way, I wouldn't be surprised if nothing changes and all of a sudden Katana scoots all the way back up to like low top 10 or high A again. I just, she's getting outshined by a lot of characters right now. Liu Kang's probably the biggest fall from Grace because he's like Raiden who we'll talk about later. Liu Kang just doesn't play into the current meta that well. I think that's his biggest issue. Yes, he does have the air fireballs which help stop some of it, but truthfully, the way you break Liu Kang, right, you make him top five, is if you allowed Farah to work in his throw combos. He doesn't have to play in the air, but the big thing is you can't really take 
Farah as Liu Kang for the mix, because his biggest strength in the game is that he's the best strike throw character. I mean, he has a six frame jab, which is nice, but he has two great mids. Forward four is great, and back two is great. And on top of that, has the best throw combos in the game. Maybe not the most damage, but you can loop the throws, so you could get a regular throw, then loop it into a throw combo, stuff like that. He just has great throw loops, has projectiles, has great damage when he gets his touch. So definitely doesn't play this Farah be in the air heavy meta that well, but if Netherrealm made that buff, right, just said, hey, Liu Kang's grab is considered airborne, bro. He'd actually be like top three if that happened. He'd, oh my, he'd break the game. He would feel like Tanya a little bit, except, yeah, because Liu Kang's armor is airborne, so he could fare after that. He would literally be strike throw Tanya. I don't want to think about that world, honestly. Never mind. Keep him there. Uh, we don't need to buff that. <laughs> what can I even really say about Rain at this point? He's just I mean, I think Netherrealm needs to go through and change, like, mechanically how Rain's combos work. He's not played enough for his execution to be that high, in my opinion. If you've ever gone and done Rain combos, you know what I'm talking about. Like, have you ever tried to do, is it down, down, up when you're trying to, like, go into the air and throw the water ball? Maybe it's up, down, up. I, I forget. It's been a while since I've gone in and done it. His execution is just way too much for... Yeah, he's strong, like he's fine. And then on top of that, why take Rain when there's other characters that have the overhead starters or a trap on the ground? I mean, Katana has a trap, but there's other characters that can do that and use Farah, you know, like use it more effectively, I should say. So you're not seeing Rain hardly at all. I haven't ran into a single Rain since the new update, fun fact. He's definitely a character that rides off cameos though. I mean, Rain is the same since launch and when Cyrax had a half bar horizontal copter chopper, all of a sudden he shoots up the tier list. So who knows, the next cameo could make Rain go crazy. I don't really think he needs a buff, just a rework to how his combos. Like let the Rain players get max damage without breaking their fingers when they land a touch. We already talked about Mei. high damage, good plus frames, but she still has the gaps that kind of cause her to fall flat. And then on top of that, I mean, she plays at range a little bit better because she could shoot the projectile, pop the lantern. I mean, against Scorpion's back three, for example, that's really strong. Lime is doing fine. She just might need like one gap closed somewhere. I don't know if that breaks the character per se because she does so much damage, but next two are the same as those four. We have Melina and then Quan Chi. Now, if you're a Scorpion player, you put Quan here. In fact, you'd probably put Quan even higher. I mean, Scorpion still 6 4 by Quan. Like, it is a tough matchup. Quan's buttons just kind of stuff Scorpion on everything he wants to do. I mean, back three, I'm getting kicked in the back. Spear, I'm getting kicked in the back. His teleport overrides Scorpion's teleport, and then all his buttons outrange Scorpion. Like, even if you block his slow recovery pokes or whatever, Scorpion can't use his mid. He just goes for a down three. There's a lot of reasons. You'll see Scorpions talking about Quan, but against the rest of the cast, on average, this is where he sits. I will say, though, this is going to piss off Quan mains, and I'm glad he's better than he once was, but man, I'm not complaining. I don't actually think that Quan is, like, strong. I just think he's annoying. I get it, right? You need a character that has the cool, like, portal abilities that gives armor, and you need the character that's constantly just kind of cheesing out with the teleport. I will say the new like downward kick, I haven't seen many Quans use it effectively that I've gone against. I mean, Quans will throw it out, but the original game plan is still the best Quan game plan. It doesn't change anything about it. I don't think he needs any changes because you don't run into enough Quan Chis for it to really start to be annoying. But I'll put him in this like weird Shiva category from MK11, except Shiva was much stronger. That if you don't know what you're doing against Quan Chi, he's like top five in the game, it feels like. And even if you do, it's still kind of a pain to play against. But other than that, he's fine. I'm not complaining about him. I'm just saying why I'm gonna put him above Melina. For me, but I know for most people it'd be the other way around. Do I put Melina in B because I'm on a mission to get Melina buffs? As everybody knows, Melina is my second most played character and my MKX main. If Melina could take advantage of Farah, kind of like Liu Kang, I would think she's perfect. If only that one amplified ball roll hit, the final one counted as Melina airborne, she'd be nuts. Uh, but you're still gonna just be using Chameleon, Lao, things like that to make her work. And yes, yeah, Scorpion as well is very good with her but you can't use Scorpion's buff if that's how you're gonna play because you need it 
for the actual combos. Her mix is still decent with Chameleon. I mean, it's really bad on its own. No high level players really getting mixed by Melina. Like you could tell right away because it's on the second hit, but the plus frames are pretty good. I'd say if I would change anything, just a light buff for her is I don't think her mid is satisfying to use. And then the game changing thing that everyone always says about Melina is if you just made her low projectile full screen, like if you didn't have to spend the bar for it. So she had some way to do anything because people could kind of run away from Melina. But yeah, in reality, she doesn't need buffs. She's a really fun casual couch character. I think she's one of the most fun characters to play in the entire game if you're not sweating in ranked. Like if you're just playing in casuals or playing your friends, learn Melina because she's a lot of fun and can hold her own. Here is where I start my B tier. B is smoke right there. And then next we have Sub-Zero. Smoke, what does smoke need, right? Armor, his armored attack sucks, dude. It really just isn't that great. I mean, what? You could play Smoke Scorpion, which is really good if you want high damage. You could play Smoke Serena. That's like the basic starter way to play Smoke. Smoke Cyrax is really good because you can do the forward one, two, one plus three. That one, you can actually connect Cyrax net afterwards, which makes Cyrax viable as well. Uh, but issue is the buff to spend the bar to cancel it virtually instantly as Sonic the Hedgehog doesn't help when everybody's in the air. So you just run across the screen for no reason. And now the opponent's on the other side side you just came from and your smoke on this side he'll still always be really strong online because it's so connection dependent like if you're going on and you see an opponent with 90 ping and you accept it on wi-fi and if you're a wi-fi player that's fine i was for the longest time like yeah this character seems broken the fake stuff seems real but with the cancel having the gap the armor being kind of trash and really having no way to use pharah at the moment he's just kind of fallen behind in the meta in my eyes sub-zero uh you know what Sub-Zero mains, I, I addressed this already once and I'm sorry that in the first video, so second video I addressed it, first video I got pretty hyped for you guys. Yeah, it feels like the same old sub, doesn't it? I mean, sub Farah is probably as good as sub chameleon in my eyes in different ways, maybe it's equal. So it's like sub is still in his last season state where if it was last season, he'd be upper end of A in my eyes, like sub chameleon, but everybody can do that fair stuff now. So sub doesn't have enough other than that to make him really all that good. I'm not putting him in buff right now because I think if fair gets nuked by nether realm, then sub chameleon will shoot back up the tier list a little bit. Oh shoot, I wish this was live. I didn't even realize I had Reptile still sitting here. Okay, uh, where does he go right here? I think he, I think he squeezes in right here. He's, he's going in at what I called the four. He's in the five now. I'm going to put him here. He has a lot of things that work well with Farah, in my opinion. So the mix is strong, but you could still play with other cameos like Mavado and such. But I think he actually takes advantage of Farah. If you watch Honeybee's stuff, you've seen it before. Still the same old reptile, but he does take advantage of having a lot of airborne strings that put him in the air where he can cancel into Farah mix. And because he already had mix ups that were slow, he doesn't have to do any unsafe things. He can just do Farah instead for any of the ones that were risky and add on to areas that he didn't have mix. I believe this will round out my B tier. Putting Shang. I'm putting Raiden above Shang because I think one, Raiden is still good. He is just the prime example of not playing into the meta at all all like his main weakness is he is kind of dead to rights in this meta he just doesn't excel like he's still good if Farah gets nuked Raiden is not this low but in the current state of the game he isn't I mean he's just a struggle pick and I think you see even more about how Raiden's bad because Raiden players had the taste of being the number one or number two character and then being top five or ten for so long whereas we have Shang Tsung who has been kind of rocky road for a long time man like I don't know what to do with Shang I really don't he's so weird because on paper I don't think he's that bad and like, yet I get it, right? I've, I've tried him myself. He just doesn't feel good to play. His matchups when they're bad are really bad. It's just, it, oh man, I feel for the Shang mans. I kind of want to put him in buff. You know what? I'm doing it. 
Shang has sat down here long enough that he deserves a buff after all. He's not even like the worst character ever. He just is boring and he needs some spice. Come on, Netherrealm. I'm gonna substitute this with Peacemaker. Like Peacemaker could probably use a buff, but why would we bring back the Peacemaker meta? If you are one of the very few people that really enjoys zoning and honestly kind of enjoyed having one of the cheapest mechanics ever, which was instant startup force field and a mid full screen armor that did 14%. I'm sorry. NRS gutted him. And for once, I think that was a decent decision because it was a guest character. But yes, he is bad. There's no point to play Peacemaker. The entire identity of his kit got gutted. All right. I'm just sticking Gears here and Havoc here. I feel so bad for Havoc mains. How have we not gotten a Havoc buff? I kind of get why we haven't gotten a meaningful Gears change, but Havoc has been talked about for so long. I've been on the sidelines saying Havoc is really bad. Havoc can win. There are top 500 players on the leaderboard that use Havoc. There's probably top 250 players on the leaderboard that use Havoc. It's just most of the time he is winning, it's due to the opponent not having the matchup knowledge because yeah, Havoc is the one taking all the risks in the set pretty much yes his armor has like four hits on it so it feels cheap and yes he can lock you into that combo where you're just kind of guaranteed to get hit by it almost and on top of that his two other strengths i could think of are yeah he has a projectile that's nice because it's like a really big orb and it also covers behind him if you have a teleport and has the really long punch uh, it's just not enough for him it's too slow if that punch from range was faster startup he could really start doing some damage but until then takeda i'm saying buff. I don't know if he's worse than these two. He's probably here for me. Takeda is kind of a letdown, but he's fun. Just go ahead and make the ninja stars on the ground low already. I mean, give it the mix-up protection, but how is Sindel and Kung Lao hat a thing, but not Takeda and low stars? That could be his entire defining kit. Everything on Takeda is either punishable, has a gap where you could just straight up hit buttons and get your full combo punish, or has like an up block or flawless block punish. So yeah, his normal range is good and having meterless launchers and stuff like that so he could do all that damage for low cost is nice. But if any of that is blocked, if you were not hit confirming perfectly, you were just getting your health bar completely torched, which I think is a huge problem for him because he needs to use Janet Cage for all that damage. If Netherrealm would just make it so he could use one of the keep yourself safe ambush cameos and still get that damage, I think he'd be fine with all the punishes, gaps, up block stuff. But to be that heavy hitter, he needs to have Janet who can't can't do that for him. So I'm hoping he gets a buff sometime soon. That's the tier list today. Let me know what you think. I'm starting to lose my voice and yeah, expect the road to rank one this weekend. So if you've been waiting on that, it is coming this weekend. Appreciate you guys as always. Try and be nice to me in the comments and I'll catch you guys next time.